I'm going to share the sutras of the eight realizations of the great beings. Uh, this topic will divided into two times of talk and sharing. And the first one is the general purpose of these sutras. The second part is the comparative from, from these uh, eight realizations of being and the eight uh, uh, awakening teachings of other sutra. So these two parts have very great meanings of the training. So today I'm going to sharing the uh, eight realizations of the great beings. Uh, Jay will be reading the eight realization. I will do a little bit explanation. Please go forward. The first realization. That is the first realization that we're reading by Jay. Uh, did everyone uh, easy to listen that? Everyone hear that? Okay. The first uh, realization uh, divided into three uh, important understanding. The first one is from the uh, physics point of view. The second one is from the biology point of view. The third one is from mentality uh, understanding. So this uh, first realization already included the very profound teaching in Buddhism, how we're going to see the material worlds uh, as uh, impermanent changing, uh, no sustain, no sustain sure. Uh, second one, we talk about the uh, physics, from the physics, all these elements, then uh, we see that for all elements included uh, of what uh, we know about the aggregate, all the uh, 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 material, physics elements that is uh, nothing but only rising and ceasing uh, phenomenon of biology changing. And then uh, when we talk a little bit subtle into the mind and brain mentality, so what we can see the changing constantly in the mentality, only all the thought, the feeling, the perception, and mental formation, and consciousness. All this inside our mind, all vibration changing, we thought that we have a basic there, or if we have something, what we can name it, but that name should be in identity changing. It's uh, no substantial at all. That is the first teaching that uh, in Buddhism we cover. And please go to the second realization. Yeah, yeah. 
The second realization is the awareness that more desire brings more suffering. All hardships in daily life arise from greed and desire. Those with little desire and ambition are able to relax their bodies and minds, free from entanglements. This second realization is uh, uh, more talking about cause and conditions. We know that in Buddhism's teachings that uh, in the first sermon, when the Buddha himself was given a, a sermon to five people or five of his uh, Greek friends in the very early time talk about uh, the teachings of Four Noble Truth. The Four Noble Truth is uh, what we want to see the cause and effect in the uh, uh, what we call that uh, in the bringing the stress and bringing into the suffering for this very life and the other part is liberation and we have the path as a cause and then the cessation as the condition, as the effect. So these two separate parts is connected by what we call the, the root, unwholesome root of uh, great hatred and ignorance. So that is the cause and condition that are always pop up in our mind, come to our bodily uh, uh, action, and then uh, turn it into phenomenons, uh, contact, all this, what about the life? So uh, that is uh, two things uh, we need to make sure that is two different kinds of life. One is mundane life in worldly samsara or in the circles of uh, uh, what we call that grabbing, clinging, and let go, grabbing, clinging, and let go. But finally, we need to totally go in transformation. That means we need to open up the path and uh, using the path to liberate our mental or even those come to the physics freedom. That is the second realization uh, we can share together as a cause and condition come to understand the noble effort path, two sides to go and have two different results. One is you will build up, accumulate your own stress and suffer. One is we uh, stepping onto the path uh, from this uh, come into the life of path, then we slowly doing all this release, and then the final result is totally got the freedom of mental, even though the physics. The third realization. The third realization is that the human mind is always searching for possessions and never feels fulfilled. This causes impure actions to ever increase. Bodhisattvas, however, always remember the principle of having few desires. They live a simple life in peace in order to practice the way and consider the realization of perfect understanding as their only career. The third, life, the third realization have two things uh, to be understand. One is our desire mind or this uh, very burning interior energy, how to apply it into uh, more practical to earn the uh, final goals of liberation. So for us, that uh, who come into the training or call practice, we call that Brahma Vihara, means 
we practice the purification means we start from that uh, very burning desire mindset come to become more simplicity guide our mind into certain discipline so that from that discipline that uh, we can have more content and simplicity of life in order to put more time and energy into practice and not put all our time and energy into senses contact and into food and other activity that not bring us uh, the uh, release so this is a two way to go the more important for us that uh, is the, the samana and the uh, brahma means uh, who going into the past as the so-called training the training is you are follow some principle from that principle we bring our life mind and body into discipline from discipline then uh, we can support the concentration or meditation practice so from meditation practice then we have earned the stabilize our mind so that we can do our investigation we can observe things more easy or more stabilized to see the reality so from that is the uh, what we call that the trainings and the effect of training for seeing all this uh, nature of life uh, we can reflect back to our own mind state so nature of life means we see all this uh, activities of the body and uh, we see other from the exterior world we see the activity of other what result bringing to the life then we can become more subtle understanding the cause and effect will be have two different uh, uh, result one is wholesome activity we bring back the wholesome result and uh, unwholesome activity will bring into unwholesome result that is a life energy we name in buddhism called karma so karma is a mental understanding is a, your own decision viewpoint and then is the habitual pattern that show in the life Okay, uh, we're going to number four. The fourth realization is the awareness of the extent to which laziness is an obstacle to practice. For this reason, we must practice diligently to destroy the unwholesome mental factors which bind us and to conquer the four kinds of Mara in order to free ourselves from the prisons of the five aggregates and the three worlds. In the four realization, they have a lot of things going on. Uh, in Buddhism, we talk about life energy will transform from the past come to present from the present and pushing into the future so that uh, uh, this is called the samsara not only this very life but some energy if we don't know how to handle that energy into purification that energy still can uh, uh, can make the happen have uh, the, the effect to the future this is uh, so that to me practice will be very reasonable because practice make things uh, can change in the future practice the right path become more important if practice uh, not into the right path we won't keep uh, the result because 
right and wrong, they have different results. So if you want the result into uh, uh, very freedom into the future, so it need to be very, very concerned about your own practice means do a lot of investigation and do a lot of reflection, sharing from others and then uh, the observing by yourself. So here number four is talking about the, something that we have in the life itself means uh, a lot of uh, things that uh, the first thing called laziness. Yeah. So laziness and then the compare with laziness, the opposed is the diligent. So uh, uh, right effort is a diligent effort, but diligent have more meaning than right effort. Not only right effort, but more accurate applying into his own result. So every step you push it into a uh, uh, higher and higher profound and deep meaning into liberation. That is the very important for ourselves. But if we, we thought about this and uh, we check our own practice, skillful means of practice can bring diligent into result. So listening to the teaching, contemplating to the teaching, and then I put it into the training in daily life, still connected to the skillful mean. So in Buddhism, that uh, what I know when the Buddha himself after awakening and until his end of life, more of his sharing and uh, advice to the uh, Sangha member or his disciple is talking about 37 factors of awakening as the prerequisites of the training. So this uh, seven set of the training, what we call Nimitz 37 factors of awakening is the skillful for diligent means not only in diligent into the body, but diligent into the mental training. So th that will help you to uh, uh, overcome the unwholesome mental factor so that you connected with the wholesome enlightening factor, means uh, the 37 factors of awakening. So that kind of uh, trainings is uh, using it for the life itself in this, uh, uh, what we call that, a fraction, fire aggregate into this very life, aging, illness, and death. All these conditions will make our life very Stress, stressful if we not in the path. If we put our life into this path training, it may open up yourself in another condition, means that condition will make yourself easy to overcome the attachment and easy to let the mind excel, uh, realize that letting go is the very moment into the training. So you will empty your mind or what we call that you don't let your ego self have too much space to stand on himself to, into the center of the life. So that the spiritual will be glowing in the training. If we see that laziness means that you are not mindful or you're mindless in something. In very important part that uh, we can see this uh, details uh, a picture that my own drawing. This map is showing that uh, a fraction 
come to suffer, suffer come to illusion. Illusion activity bring a fraction. This is a small sansara of the mind state, all in the valley line. And then if we put it into more bigger uh, uh, circle, then we can see these uh, big circles of sansara. They have form, realm, formless realm, and then they have desire realm. So this is uh, to, from very rough realm come to a more subtle realm into uh, mentality. If we put it into second uh, smaller circle, then we can see that is a fraction, that is a celestial being, that is the depth, is the stressful or suffering into independent to each other. So how are we going to overcome this? Then we need to directly come into our valley life. That means the body and mind. This is called five skandha. So from the practice point of view, sometimes it's an individual realization. Sometimes it's an individual liberation. There you cannot depend on other beings that or other formation can uh, let you freedom. Freedom need to directly come to five aggregate. And from five aggregate need to more settle into his profound release. This is the, the number four realization bring us the teaching. They talk about a lot of uh, like the Mara. Uh, Mara means everything that from the five aggregate out to the uh, second circle, second circle outside into the three realm circle. This all included in the names of Mara. Number five. The fifth realization is the awareness that ignorance is the cause of the endless round of birth and death. Therefore, bodhisattvas always remember to listen and learn in order to develop their understanding and eloquence. This enables them to educate living beings and bring them to the realm of great joy. Number fifth, that uh, we talk about uh, bodhisattva. Uh, I want to mention a little bit uh, the, the, the words of Bodhisattva in the very early days that we see this word come from Buddhism is the Buddha, he mentioned about his life before enlightened or before he got into Nibbana, totally liberated of his uh, uh, stress and suffering of life. From that on, when he talk about before that realization take place into the life, he said that in the Bodhisattva, I am practiced in the Bodhisattva means the cause. And then after enlightenment become the Buddha is the effect. So right here we talk about uh, a Bodhisattva means we listen to this teaching or we uh, observing this teaching, we contemplating it, or if we do the self reflection to the teaching in the Dhamma, then totally we wake up of ourselves. We know that the life carry on large of ignorance. So ignorance means you cannot tell it is uh, 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 what you call that it is uh, greed or it is anger in great or anger, then we can see it very easy, oh, this is a great, and this is an anger. So no matter your hunger or your anger, you, we can see this emotion is more easy, but ignorant means it is different. It's not easy to tell until you know it, uh, uh, after the suffering come or after a lesson you experience it then you can realize 
oh, I'm ignorant. For myself, the life, mostly I'm very troubled with ignorance because ignorance cannot uh, make myself uh, uh, easy to decide what is going on, which step I need to put my footstep into the, the, the uh, uh, walking to front. And this is called ignorance. So I put six types of activities uh, that are in the life that uh, usually I taught the life born into this very uh, life into the world, study. So after education, we may have family. Someone not finished education, they already have family. So family life, and then we come to the job side, occupation, we choosing to some kind of uh, job. And uh, we come to the job site in order we support the family, we support our life itself to carry on this life, move on. And then uh, sometimes we have entertainment, sometimes we are planning for retirement. So no matter the entertainment that uh, bring you joy and release, sometimes uh, we, we have a lot of uh, what we call that uh, right now is uh, uh, we have a vocation. All this is included. But spiritual life practice sometimes is not included to the life itself. A lot of people that uh, not have any kind of spiritual life at all. So uh, some of them, they just put the spiritual life into option. Uh, from time to time, they may have option put it into uh, uh, as a choice, but mostly that will not work for yourself into the overcome the samsara because uh, the habitual of samsara will be very, very strong, glued and make the life itself into the merge. The merge of what? The merge of uh, learning families uh, concerning uh, retirement, the uh, occupations, uh, all this uh, entertainment, all this will, the condition take over your energy and the take the, the, your time and uh, shorten your life connected to the enlightenment. So here is something that the Bodhisattva always remember. What is going on the Bodhisattva I want to remember? I write down there is two things. The first thing is the purpose is to be free from the samsara and attain Nibbana. This is uh, something that ideally you know the goal. That goal needs to be self-awakened and self-disciplined. If you really decide that is the goal by the awakening, then the self-awakened and self-discipline will be generated. So Bodhisattva is uh, generated by this goal. He already decided the goal and then he won't come to uh, uh, the merge anymore. He just pull out his uh, footstep from the merge and then come to the driveway so that the dry path will bring him more easy to walk uh, connected to the path as his final goal. So he will be more uh, what we call their self-aware and then self-disciplined. The second one is from that on, uh, he served the living being or he served the society. He give to the society. Not much to worry about that because he have enough virtue and wisdom to cultivate his mentality, his verb and his physique. From here, he can develop more good connection or the virtual connection to the society. And then he can see 
what is the corruption, what is the suffer and stress from the society, make himself that from awakened to other, then he awakened to himself. So other need to be awakened. He see that is the, the things are happening, uh, come to the result, good or bad. Then he will reflecting back to himself to move a little bit forward into the purification. That is what I want to uh, uh, share into this fifth part of realization. So important one is the ignorance and the recorrection of Bodhisattva. That uh, I will uh, skip it into the uh, next talk. Uh, next part going to share a little bit. So right now we're going into number six. The sixth realization is the awareness that poverty creates hatred and anger, which creates a vicious cycle of negative thoughts and activity. When practicing generosity, bodhisattvas consider everyone, friends and enemies alike, as equal. They do not condemn anyone's past wrongdoing, nor do they hate those who are presently causing harm. In this, uh, the sixth realization I just want to say is the Bodhisattva life is overcome boundary. So he is not in the, this and that boundaries to open up themselves in the uh, uh, what we call their generosity, start from generosity, start to, from giving and serving the, into these worldly beings. So in the life itself, we have a lot of religion boundary, we have a lot of nation boundaries, uh, race, races boundary, color, and then we have uh, 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 the gender boundary, we have animal or other beings and living being boundary. So then to make ourselves being uh, limited into the generosity and then be limited into uh, uh, what we call that uh, giving by fearlessness so that we can give ourselves more pure, give the Dhamma into more equal and give material into more equal sharing to living being. That is uh, this uh, uh, teaching, I make two map into uh, more sequently talk about this. The important part is the uh, accompanies in the order form means the how we can achieve it in uh, this systematic teaching. So Bodhisattva, the first thing, uh, uh, important one is called generosity, giving. The second one important of Bodhisattva training is patience. The third one uh, important teaching in the Bodhisattva life is for Brahma Vihala. That is uh, the uh, in important uh, sharing in this uh, 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 of Bodhisattva training or his own works, how he can act himself into this, uh, what we call the selfishness uh, uh, movement into that enlightenment form of life, totally different from other uh, uh, training because uh, once you open up yourselves in unselfish teaching, unselfish sharing and unselfish giving, it totally open up yourself directly into the liberation, directly into the free of mind state. So we see things differently and we, we have more happiness because of we not bound ourselves into certain boundary and limited our action, limited our uh, mind and heart into that narrowness. Number seven. The 
The seventh realization is that the five categories of desire lead to difficulties. Although we are in this world, we should try not to be caught up in worldly matters. A monk, for example, has in his possession three robes and one bowl. He lives simply in order to practice the way. His precepts keep him free from attachment to worldly things, and he treats everyone equally and with compassion. We're back to the very real life. This most uh, practical ways of uh, training is in this very life. So in the ancient time, we have two kinds of uh, lifestyle choosing. One is a Brahman, one is called Samana. Uh, Brahman means that uh, the, the practical life, you have family what need to take care, you have job side, uh, you, you need to take care. So maybe you are a merchant or you are a politician or you are a scientist. So that, that is the worldly uh, occupation that you need to serve to make living. The other kind of uh, uh, life that we choosing is individual lifestyle. You are secluded yourself you are individual, don't have family, so that uh, the life will be more concerned that occupation is sharing the Dhamma and sharing the practice so that you are directly handed the wholesome message of liberation. You are virtually tendency in this wholesome uh, training so that uh, you straight forward to put your life and energy in this very moment of life. Uh, right and now, you are directly straightforward connected to the emancipation. So that the emancipation will let you drop down the five senses contact into the worldly concern and then pull back yourself, not have the family worry. And then that individually you can more freedom to use this energy and time properly. That is called the samana. Very significant have its own identity of training. No matter what, I put it into three because of this is a very important. Uh, life is simplicity in order to practice the path. This is the first thing I want to uh, share. No matter you are Brahma or you are Samana, it always starts from here. The second one is the pure precept, keep him free from attachment to the worldly things. No matter what, always start from the body, come to the mental. So body needs to be aware of discipline. So the Accept five precepts or start from all these precepts come to uh, uh, the protection of your own life. So precept is the armor into the uh, living beings uh, liberated uh, 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 condition. So the armor is the protection so that you won't make mistake and put yourself into danger uh, gratification or you don't know how to escape because you you already been caught and, and tied up into very very tight and then cannot have any freedom anymore because of the worldly concern the five senses concern or the other material grabbing always make things more uh, worse so that uh, release it from there so that you can more easy to apply into spiritual life. That is the second one I want to say. And the third one is treat everyone equally with compassion. Very difficult is this one. If compassion without wisdom, a lot, a lot of uh, trouble will come into the life. 
So wisdom without compassion, you cannot more practically earn the trust and earn the uh, uh, support by others. So trust, bring them have confidence into the training. And support means uh, if without compassion, showing the, the, your sharing with them the uh, hardship, the fear, uh, and they don't know how to appreciate you, then they won't support you easily. So compassion and wise become uh, uh, like your hand, two sides of your palm, your back hand and your palm, your palm. So this is to showing that uh, we need to have certain wisdom before you can use the compassion and loving kindness more uh, uh, purifying into your own beneficial, what we call that, liberation or Nibbana. So the Buddha himself not talking about too much of compassion, but they talk about how to letting go, how to win the wisdom. So without compassion, if you have wisdom, you know how to use your, your, your loving kindness and you do know how to use your uh, uh, generosity. You know how to use the patient to the society. But without wisdom, if you talk about loving kindness, talk about compassion, maybe have a lot, quite a lot of side effects is because of this compassion activity or loving kindness activity will bring to stuck yourself into the obstacle, mental or physical. That is called samsara. So I put it into this way so that you can see. The number of reforming conduct is uh, number one into number one, means uh, uh, someone who live in the simplicity of life and practice the path, he always need to become a gentleman from all this uh, uh, precept, take the precept into the life, to take refuge. If you take refuge and you don't using the precept to uh, uh, control yourself or to be uh, stop your long activity, it won't make the life easy. The second part is once you go to uh, uh, listening to the Dhamma, then the Dhamma is using this uh, 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 after listening, need to put into practice. Here I want to say practice means you practice concentration and practice observation. So concentration and observation is two kinds of energy for the mental state to cultivate. Once who practice this individually and cultivate the concentration and uh, observations achieve or he successful turn these two kinds of energy into his mental state, then the Dhamma I will open. He will less dust in his uh, eyes, what we call that when the eyes open, the five senses contact to the world become more easy to overcome the uh, uh, hindrances, overcome all this uh, grabbing, clinging, or into the samsara. So superior Dhamma means he will see 
the Dhamma teaching because of eyes less dust, he will see it more clearly in the profound meaning. So once people can get to decide which meaning is the profound meaning when he do the reading, when he do the contemplating, and when he observe the reality, then the superior Dhamma is slowly built up in this very enlightened being's mind. And contamination wisdom or the profound Dhamma teaching will come into the life. Once people have this wise wisdom, then he won't lack of loving kindness and compassion. And I want to say is, Nibbana come to the life always in the same time with loving kindness and compassion. Number eight. The eighth realization is the awareness that the fire of birth and death is raging, causing endless suffering everywhere. We should take the great vow to help everyone, to suffer with everyone, and to guide all living beings to the realm of great joy. Number eight is talking about the uh, enlightenment of Buddhahood. I want to share the three in here. The unity is of knowledge and action, so need to come together. Uh, for the life of my own so-called practice as a monkhood, I'm more concerned about the training of myself than reading the information from others. Training of yourself means the action is important than the theories. So from the action, you experience something direct experience, and you experience the more profound meanings of the training of concentration and observation. If you're reading the book, maybe you only earn the memories of something. Ideally, you pick up the real point of other, but not your own direct experience. This is what I call that realization need to be action than uh, the knowledge. The second one is a continuous of cause and effect. So for a realization standpoint of realization, cause and effect will bring you to result. Means a cause and effect of unwholesome and cause and effect of wholesome that is equally processed. You cannot go to both sides. You only can choose to one side because this is have three kinds of support. The first one is smooth flow, means it equal the flow into two sides, like in the uh, uh, horizontal. That is a two side level. It will flow, flow it into. You only can choose one side to go. You cannot go two side. So one is uh, going into stress and suffer. Uh, and and uh, a fraction. One is uh, going into purity, into calmness, into liberation. Uh, you got the free from that. So these two sides we call the equal flow in the cause and effect, supported by the condition. So that condition will be uh, make you. Uh, what I using the word is uh, 
conforming. Conforming means uh, you rely on something in order that support uh, will pushing you into the uh, uh, into the aim or into the final goal. So one final goal is uh, totally liberated into Nibbana. Another one is his goal is uh, into the samsara. That is the final goal, make the samsara more, more and more compact into that kind of you know, what we call that uh, 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 suffering energy or the uh, Tukka energy. So we are not purifying ourselves because of the unwholesome activity will bring you to accumulate, make the energy more strong and strong, make the samsara to become uh, uh, more strong to put yourself caught into. Here is something that the last one, uh, unceasing. I use another word is no grab or no intent intermission in the mission. Concentration and observation is a two kind of uh, purifying energy from the real life realized enlightened being that he need to discover and he need to achieve. So that is something energy that uh, when the Buddha said they have some uh, supernatural power, uh, they have the psychic power, they have the uh, what we call that uh, uh, totally no defilements uh, mind state power. All this is the, the what we call that uh, very profound meanings of the training. So this training make uh, the life very different. What different? Patient. So that I use the word patient to uh, uh, describe when the Buddha saw, Bodhisattva in the life, it have uh, four kinds of patient from this life, uh, moving to the next life, moving to the next life, uh, to the future. He don't worry about the life come to samsara, but he have some power that other living being not carry with, not uh, uh, what we call that, uh, not develop constantly into the future. But the Bodhisattva life have the patient is a very, very uh, uh, clear what I see, this patient is, patient is not mentioned in the uh, Telawadin Buddhism a lot, but mentioned into the Mahayana scripture a lot. I put it into here, these four kinds of patient. Uh, not only uh, the mineralogy we need to learn, but a lot of information, a lot of profound teaching can be found in this terminology. And in the future, if I have more time to sharing the teaching of Bodhisattva, maybe it's a good start to understand these four kinds of patients. The last one, Greek beings practice 10 paramitas. So great beings practice 10 Palamita to become the Buddha. This is no matter the uh, Telawadin or the Mahayana side, both of them is agree. They have the common understanding of the Palamitas. There is no doubt about this. And I want to uh, have a short conclusion about the talk before I end my sharing. The eight realizations of beings is a totally open up my eyes into the Dhamma when I learned the Telawada teaching and come to the Mahayana Buddhism 
study. So from this, it make my life have more option and more uh, uh, open up myself, not only for the my own Dharma study, but open up myself to sharing other teaching from the world. Not only Buddhists as talk about we ourselves are wise, but we still sharing and we still recognize wise people is everywhere in the world. Nobody don't have the chance of touching to the truth. Even though they don't know the Dhamma, they still have the option, they still have the chance and condition touching to the truth. The truth from material form, the truth from biological form, the truth from mental form. Either touching can bring them enlightened to the truth. So virtue and the fruitions of Buddhahood mentioned in Buddhism have very profound meaning. I share from that. And the second one is Bodhisattva's work. I learned from the Mahayana perspective. Make me see that is not the only path they have. The path. The past will showing in different angles in different starting point because life is carry on process from the past to the present and to the future and the lifespan have a large or big space to open up your skillful mind so the skillful mind bring bodhisattva's work into possible the third Suffering with living beings means not only your individual practice can open up yourself into the enlightenment, but helping others put your life into hardship and training yourself in that condition, in that affraction, same way can make you maturing your Dhamma understanding, your Dhamma right experience. The last part is Dhamma body and Nibbana. That is what I found uh, uh, to make my life more confidence into the Dhamma is the Buddha said after the awakening after he is enlightened he have no other body formation left in the mind only the Dhamma body still remain active in the very life that is the connection to this power to the world to this power sharing to his disciple. So the Buddha himself have 10 powers and then the Arahant itself have five parts of Dhamma body. What is the difference of five parts and then the 10 powers? The Buddha himself have mentioned it, it, it some to Sariputra have sharing a lot into other when the disciple don't have that kind of uh, wise wisdom, then the Buddha will show that, oh, so and so, so and so in the development and cultivation. So I have more power, more profound uh, uh, power in my uh, Dhamma body. So that is the teaching what I found in the teachings to make me have more confidence into the Buddha himself than the Arahantship. Thank you.
Last word I want to say, the Buddha mentioned himself, I am the great Alahang. What is a great Alahang means and the Alahang? This I have some uh, uh, new understanding in my idea after I uh, 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 reading the Chinese resources and uh, if any want to share with you one day may throw little bits of evidence from the Chinese resource we tell we share with you the Greek Alahans and the Arahans. Thank you.